right, perfect. Um, so I literally just got off the plane and came sprinting in here uh, from Games for Change in, uh, in New York. So we've heard about that conference. Yep. It's pretty amazing. Uh, yeah. It's fantastic. The past couple of days, we have all the research that's been done around of gaming and VR to the cognitive side, how it's affecting um, both students and uh, just in terms of like how people predict presence and what that means for the future. It's just a really exciting time right now. Uh, we're kind of in the middle of it. It's the offering tool for a lot of that. So I thought I'd talk about that a little bit and also about some of our programs. Um, we will have a booth on the show floor. So we're going to have actually our curriculum folks there who built new courseware, as well as certifications. So just getting pretty deep into that, it's just to come by the booth and talk to some of them. And we also have, for those that are, have really techie questions, which I can hand wave and you know do a dance or something, but I'm not going to get really deep into the coding side. Uh, but we'll have, actually we have one of our best evangelists, uh, field engineers, who's going to be at the show. It's fantastic. If you come up to a group, that's for Mike Guy, G-E-I-G, and he will pretty much be able to answer anything. Uh, and I really shouldn't build him up that much. But that's uh, <laughs> pretty awesome, I'm going to say. So, is everybody pretty familiar with Unity? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Anybody teaching with it right now? Thinking about it? We want to. Cool. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Students use it. <laughs> yeah, students, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Uh, great. So, just for those of you getting to know it, so it's a, it's a platform and a development tool. If I came from Adobe, I ran higher education in K-12 there, Macromedia, for many years. And it is very much we're talking about so the early days of Flash and other tools about developing games and interactive media and that kind of thing. Um, but it's really sort of the, the next wave, and that's absolutely no question to Adobe because Adobe is part of the workflow of what you build in terms of putting content into uh, Unity. But Unity makes it much easier to go in and build out 3D worlds as well as get into VR and AR, which of course is what students want to do right now, all of a sudden. It's like, hey, it's, yeah, I want to do that. I really want to build VR. So learning these tools, it's actually not a big leap to then build VR, as long as you follow the best practices and design principles around that, because that's where things can go sideways with VRs if you don't use those best practices of um, making sure it's set up correctly. Uh, but we do a whole range of different areas, both it's used a lot in architecture for walkthroughs, and my god, the, the VR architecture content that's going to be coming out soon is absolutely astounding. To be able to walk in a full virtual environment through a room, as well as to be able to you know, see even in terms of data sources coming in, the, where it might may not be working, or may not be the strongest with. I mean, it's just really the applications are amazing. As well as the series games, the government is using it quite a bit right now for uh, training military. Uh, in terms of how to defuse bombs you know, before you go over there. You know, how to, <laughs> not a real life simulation, right? It's much better to do it that way. Uh, how to fix helicopters. You know, it's, it's, think about the implications of that. It's, it's pretty cool. As well as, there's a lot of research going on right now, for example, at UC, USC, about uh, vets coming back with PTSD and being in a full, immer full immersive environment where they're able to walk through and re-experience, dress, face some of the things that, that, that's happened. It's rising the research has shown that helps PTSD a lot. Fear of heights, fear of spiders. You've probably seen a lot of this on. It's just, it's really, really exciting what's going to uh, be possible with it. And lots of tools coming out for that. Um, lots of hardware that's going to make it more accessible to us regular folk. Although we get like cool stuff at Unity, but you know, I mean, <laughs> regular people like us. Uh, it's, you know, that's sort of the, there was the wave of VR is going to be awesome, and then there was, you know, it was really hard to get it down to the point where people could afford it. Probably by Christmas, we're going to start seeing a lot of uh, new solutions coming out that are more, uh, more affordable than, say, the Vive and Oculus Rift you've probably heard of. But that's just exciting. Thanks to Google, people like that, using uh, companies like that, creating uh, cardboard. It's, it's really right now. The thing that's holding it up is developing good content. And you know, help companies like ours trying to show people how to do this is what, remember, remember the 3D TVs? 
which you had one or two titles to watch? It's because it doesn't have content being built for it. And so right now, you're really going to see an explosion of content, and both in games and actual experiences. So, um, how big is community? Community's pretty big. I thought it was funny when they did this graphic that we're up in Greenland, too. Not really sure we actually have a lot of users up in Greenland, but <laughs> it is pretty global. Uh, the largest developer groups, uh, we've got 45% market share in the games. It's the majority of what you download uh, from both the iTunes store and on your computer is Unity. You're less so on the whole AAA console on your Xbox, but you're seeing a lot more of that right now. And then, surprisingly, 85% 85, uh, 85% of the VR and AR content you're seeing out there right now is, uh, is all built with Unity. It's easier to get built quickly and you can you know, quickly deploy. Does anybody know what VR and AR is virtual reality? Yes. Reality? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not <laughs> Sometimes people are like, what are you talking about? You know what? I actually do in some of the uh, reports that we have. And if you come by the booth, yeah. I could actually provide some of that. It's really surprising in terms of uh, users. We haven't sliced and diced a lot. But for example, there's some great uh, reports out in, it's called Higher Ed Games Alliance. And it's a bunch of the higher education game programs like RIT. Uh, SMU, which we got together and did surveys out to all the different game programs around the U.S. as many as they could get, and, uh, and and looked at a lot of the demographics. And you're seeing some really cool statistics around games, in particular, in terms of getting girls more engaged. So in traditional IT, I believe it's about 12 percent, and with games, it's more upwards of like 24 percent. So that, that varies by institution and type of program, but we're trying to get as much of that data because it does seem to, even in high schools that we've been talking to, uh, attract obviously more girls. It's, it really depends on sort of the outreach from what, it's, from what I've been talking to a lot of programs about, about getting people, getting students understanding sort of the different roles that are involved in the game. Because you do play the tech and art side, the programming side, there's the PM side, project manager. So once they, they understand that, it really does draw in a, a broader group of students. So I do have some of that uh, data, and uh, I can send you links to the reports. If I have my email yet. Um, so, do we just there? Uh, okay. So our we really came to this ethos of democratizing game development and really sharing this uh, platform out as much as possible. So. It is a fee to use it, but then we don't take tax on a royalty for life for it. Um, but in education, in schools, we actually give it away free, it's a grant. And then we actually, it's just the curriculum and the certification, the course rate certification that we charge for now. Uh, but it does, you know, it's all relative in terms of intuitive learning curve. It is a much easier learning curve than a lot of the tools out there. And it's just like with Photoshop and other products, the kids can pick it up really quick. And so what we're, what we're, we're really focused on is creating um, as much curriculum and professional development training that we can do for teachers to understand how to use it um, in, the, in the classroom and aligning with standards and providing frameworks to align curriculum with. Did you have a question? Okay, I'm just seeing things right now. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. So again, our education group is very focused on uh, creating a whole solution, and, and really it was very similar to what we did at Adobe, which was really understanding some of those key areas that are going to help it be successful, and help you be successful, and students be successful in uh, schools. And of course, it's, it's really a great time right now because both in the UK, where they have big gaming initiatives in terms of you know, every student has to create a game before they graduate. And that can be scratch, it can be in a range of different tools, but obviously that initiative of creating something is something that we're seeing in countries globally. And we're talking to many ministries of education, again, develop curriculum and resources to help people put it, put it into their program. So, um, so again, right now, just in the past year, did anybody know we have these free grants? Surprise. No. <laughs> you can have the best product in the world, but if you don't tell anybody about it, nobody knows. Um, so, yeah, so we provide a secondary grant, and you can apply online, and it would go 
goes to our two uh, business development people, sales people, who cover east and west, and they process that and send it out to schools, and they'll actually both be at the booth uh, at this whole show. And uh, it's, it's no charge for that. We do have free curriculum frameworks and a uh, whole range of resources. And then we do have bundles that include, and we'll talk a little bit about certifications we just came out with, as well as that coursework. So again, I'm trying to focus in this particular area. One of the things that I'll, I'll mention in a, in a few minutes is any of the, if anybody's at a training center or like universities like community colleges have training centers, we just launched a program to have a, to be an authorized uh, Unity training center where you can actually provide courseware training or just certification uh, programs separate as a training center. Of course, as an institution, you always get we trust everybody in Proctor, and they're full Proctor environments um, that we expect if they're high stakes you know, exams, very much like the uh, Adobe certifications were that we did back at Adobe around Photoshop. I don't know if anybody provides the associate level Adobe products. So this one's a little bit tougher, um, and I'll explain that a bit, but it's very much in the same model because, again, regionally, Perkins Gray, obviously, this is a big um, request we had, and we really had this as a big request from employers. Because the games market, if anybody is very familiar with it, I thought I actually was like, oh yeah, I've watched the games, you know, I understand the games industry. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty different. It's very much the same tools, but the, the, the companies in it, the developers, the, the actual industry in terms of the games industry itself, of the production cycle, is quite a bit different than a lot of agencies. And so one of the things that it's kind of wild west out there, and that's part of also the sort of the ethos that we had and many game development platforms had about it being open, and there wasn't necessarily always one right way to do something, but certainly we tried to give direction, but it really has been sort of this infancy growing up into some of these big platforms that are being used, but still, you know, it's very difficult for employers to find people who actually have some of this breadth of depth of skills that they need, or to be able to assess whether or not they even have skills for these parts of the team that they have. Because a lot of times it's little parts of games that they've worked on, or one big game that they've worked on, or an experience with a big team. So doing this uh, certification is both come from industry as well as from education. So again, this has been probably our, you know, one of the biggest drivers and always the support that we get from the overall company in terms of product development, and in terms of us being able to get our education customers more involved with the product teams. Um, and I'll mention this in a sec, but I don't know if anybody has used Unity and seen any of our services. Um, so we have services like Analytics right now, and also Collab, which is a collaborative environment you can have with your students on a team that you all can be sharing and working on the same project. Well, the exciting part of that is about 80% of the people on the beta of this product are all in education, K-12 and higher ed, and, which I think is fantastic, particularly for that type of environment, because not only the product teams, we're their number one you know, focus right now, which is awesome for education, but that I've seen that really help build products. So uh, even Adobe Connect and Captivate, you know, back in the Adobe, those were driven a lot by people in education, which again, I think is fantastic that um, here at Unity, we're able to get these different teams to listen to the needs of education because every single one of them guess that it's critical to get education involved, to help them use the tools because the skills, there's just a big skills gap out there right now. There's so much demand for people in with having these types of skills, particularly with the VR and AR side. So vocational, technical schools, I mean this is something that everybody wants to support us, Google, a whole range of companies, because again, we're all in the VR air spot, and even we're having a hard time finding people with the skills needed to develop this. So that's why you know, we're here, but we're going to do whatever we can to help education use this. So right now, we just just grew hugely in our in our group. We hired curriculum people. Um, VR researchers and education from UCLA, a whole range of different people, and our goal is to have pathways around our different certifications. So 
what we started with is the developer one, and that one has uh, just came out at GDC in March. And that is a foundational uh, skill set of game production. So it really is across from both the design to the programmer side, providing that foundation of skills, but then most times, unless you're, you know, you're one of those unicorns, people take a path of, on the programming <laughs> side and on the design side, the type of artist side, which is great to have, also get them to know that foundational skill so they understand the other parts of the workflow, even though they may not be doing that track. Um, and also, of course, to, to help just in terms of maybe, you know, people that do want to maybe go, not necessarily all the way to technical artists, but play in you know, a different range of those different areas around production. So, so with that, we have the developer side, we're working right now on the professional program and artist side, which we quite advanced. And then the next area that we're also working on right now are specializations, which are more of uh, not a full certification, but a badge course that you can learn in foundations of virtual reality and analytics. And one of the, you know, those things are have changing so fast right now. I mean, literally the industry just, the whole development process just changed with NVIDIA and a bunch of the video card companies coming out with much faster, much faster technology. So with those dramatic changes happening, I mean, yes, the industry has changed very quickly, but in this area, you, know, you can't tell somebody over a year and a half, you're certified at this level when boom, everything's going to change in six months. So we want to, so the, our goal with these is to have you know, assessment and validation of the skill set of going through that course, but also being able to update it quickly and efficiently with all the changes that are happening. Yes? Um, as you're talking about certifications, it seems like one of the models is the old CompTIA model where you have the A-plus exam and it changes every 18 months. Is that what you're suggesting in terms of professional programmer that would change to keep up with the changes in the hardware? Yes, well, I'm saying that would actually both. So it's a longer cycle for us with the professional artist and professional programmer, um, as well as developer. We have about a about 15 to 18 month turnover in that. Uh, we also have the ability to update it. Your certification is valid for two years uh, with those particular ones, because they're, they're very advanced test, professional and artist and the programmer. Um, and the developer one is, it's a, you know, it's, I'll show you in a second, it's 100 questions, it's a 90 minute test. Um, the, it'll be a much shorter process with the badges, specialization. And that is because that, even that area, is changing so much faster. Because again, it's, there's, a, there's a lot of moving parts of VR right now to get it to a, a consumer base for people to be able to use, easily to develop. So, for example, the lap, the, the hardware in our booth, we're going to have a, um, I'll mention this, this is the coolest part. We're going to have an HTC Vive set up, as well as uh, an Oculus Rift. And then in our separate meeting room, we have another Vive, and we have a bunch of community ed content. You can experience if nobody's seen the Vive. It's just amazing to have the full body tracking and just to see what's possible. Um, the hardware we have is about $4,000, probably $5,000 for the hardware. Uh, to make it the frame rate go quick enough, um, even the laptops that we'll have for the Oculus are about this big. Uh, and it's that's the reason why it hasn't gotten down to the consumer level as much yet. But again, the video cards is changing, and you're going to really start to see at Christmas time uh, a much more affordable solutions, both in terms of the headset, the VR equipment, as well as what it's, what's needed to run it. Next year, you're really going to see a big dramatic impact of what people are trying to get it down to to make it affordable and accessible. Okay, so please like, no. oh. Yeah. Is Willow Park the starting point for certification process? Is that an associate level? Um, it is the, the foundation level. Uh, it's, you can absolutely, if people want to go into, when we come out with programmer and artists into that, we'll also allow people to uh, take VR and AR, which these are we're coming out this fall, and now I'm there. It's super good to just hide these things, and even though it's not, you know, we are going to come out, but we have the, the developer one is available. We want people to know what's coming and also to um, understand, you know, why these things are going to be some shorter courses and longer courses. Certainly, developer is the foundation level. I would say it's harder 
then at associate level, we have been considering doing an associate level. Part of what we're doing is getting it out to a lot of people right now in a whole range of different programs, because part of it is sort of validating the, how difficult it is. Do you have an associate level? No, that is our main one. And we had quite a few high school students taking it. It's obviously a more college students have been passing it. Even professionals, interestingly enough, not all of them have been passing it. And that's because a lot of them traditionally have take on peer program route or peer technical route. So we put the um, item objectives up on the website so people can see and study up on. But many times the, you know, the peer programming guys have a much harder time with, say, the lighting or the um, animation side. And vice versa, some of the basic programming stuff, the tech, the artists and designers have a hard time with. So it's, it's, it is foundational, but it's still challenging for even some of the people who've been out in industry. Um, so right now, we're really trying to uh, assess whether or not we need to do an associate level one, or whether the programs that are teaching this right now are the students are actually learning more in that foundation level skill set. because. It really does depend. You know, part of it is we have psychometricians working on it right now. Um, and that is, again, for right now, we're going to stick with the developer and concentrate on, on having our books finish the pro versions and then focus on the biggest demand areas, which are VR and AR, um, as supplemental courses on it right now. But again, they're listening, and particularly as people start to, to use this, it's been out, you know, we've got it out in quite a few schools. If that's where we really see a lot of demand, we can absolutely do that. But again, I would, it's, we, we don't want to make it too simple, certainly not a test like, like this. Yes? So when I'm preparing kids for A plus and network plus and stuff like that, I use the Microsoft MBA test as kind of lower level, easier to find out if they're ready to go to the next step. Is there a shorter step that you see happening? I think I heard you say something about batches where they shoot for this slightly easier thing that lets them know they're on the right track to go to the harder stuff. Is that kind of the route you see this Yeah, moment? I mean, it, actually, I should say, one of the things we are doing is, well, we have a certification at developer level here, and this has really come from um, employers who want to um, assess where their team skill sets are before they send them all through the certification to see if they can provide training. So we are going to be providing an assessment tool, which is, <coughs> almost in a way, a, a associate level. It'll be less questions, shorter time, and lighter version, but across the breadth of the, the, breadth of the um, developer certification. So that tool, um, we are literally, it should be a couple months that we're working on. That we can actually provide to schools as well, too, for students to take the test. So that is, again, that's the, that's the, that would be more of an assessment before people take it. The VR and AR are, are going to have two levels. We're going to have an introduction to VR and an introduction uh, to well, VR and AR, and then a advanced version of that. However, they sh they need to learn the development tool skills before they get into VR, because once you learn the Unity offering uh, tool set, you can develop AR or VR and AR. Um, but you do need to know those foundation skills. Do it. You don't actually have to take a certification to do that. A lot of people may choose, um, in the professional area, who have enough skills to just go right into that area. And that would be the shorter badging program that we have. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yes? Were you aware that there's a testing company called Precision that has a bunch of the elements of your stuff, except at a much easier level? And that's what kind of what I was trying to get at earlier when I was talking about the different levels. But you might not even know about that. I do know about, I'm not sure if it's precision, but I have seen a lot on uh, Udemy, and a lot of courses out there, a lot of people building stuff with Unity, and I say fabulous. You know, I, it's, not, it's not our official certification, right. um, but I think that more good content that's out there, helping people to, to learn this, uh, I think is great. And I've seen some of the courses on uh, Udemy and, and other areas, and they've gotten really good reviews, and I think, you know, just look at who's taking them, look at who's built them, and, and again, the more, the better. But these are our, our particular Unity authorized program. That being said, you know, we're just looking for scaffolding to 
to get us to your level. Well, and you know, that's a really good point, and I should, uh, if you could stop by, I'll, I'll definitely have um, David follow up with you, <laughs> because we have, our curriculum people are going to be here, and I'd really like them to hear those thoughts, but for you guys to also evaluate it. So we, we also do a 30-day evaluation of the courseware, and we have all the exam items and the certifications, so you can evaluate that as well. But that's a really good idea to look at some of the stuff that's out there. Um, and for us to provide better information about that. And I don't want to necessarily scare you guys off that it's too hard because we have some people coming in saying, oh, that was simple. Not a lot. And others who I know are experienced going, that was hard. So that's the, that's the nature of the game industry because people have all come into it in different areas and, and different paths. So, yeah, it's part of the reason why I am very interested in partners and looking at what, what others have been doing is because can't scale quick enough for my team. Can't scale quick enough for all these this demand. Um, even in um, areas like sound, you know, there's great audio uh, studio companies. That <laughs> one in particular that's been fantastic that has worked with NYU and USC, you name it. And some of these specializations, I'd like to partner with those courses. So you know, you have both pros in the industry, or what you, you name it, that can help supplement some of this content. So. This is all sort of the beginning for us of what we're coming out with and why we're out talking to you guys and you know, we're listening to the industry, but we really want to understand what works also best for, for you guys moving forward, um, the support we can have, and, and what kind of partners we can help bring to scaffolding and pointing to in terms of who we recommend for something that we don't, don't necessarily do. Because if we're trying to do everything, we're not going to do anything really well. And that's why, you know, Focusing on the things we can do well with resources and then partnering uh, is great. And also, even the training centers. Did I? No. Sorry. Okay. Uh, so, again, if you come to the booth, you can see that we'll have the course we're running on there. Um, you just ask those guys in the booth for a three day uh, evaluation of it. And then the uh, certification test, which of course we don't show, but we have all of the exam <laughs> items on it, the areas. <laughs> Unless you bribe her, and again, I, I know that uh, Cynthia else wanted to present, so I don't want to go into too many other areas. Yeah, again, we'll we'll be going through this a lot in the booth. Please come by if you have not seen Vive or the Audio Swift and to see the type of content that has been built. We also have a couple educators in the booth uh, from high schools whose students are just creating this insane games at the level that like they, they've come into our office and our engineers have just been absolutely astounded at the complexity of games they've built. So if you want to see some of those, talk to some educators that have built these programs, how they've approached it, challenges that they've seen, and you know, please, please do that because it's it's not a, it is a great thing to go into in terms of being science programs and getting students engaged, but it is really a matter, I think, a lot of times of just finding the right resources and the right way to build the program to get people engaged. Of um, course, I mentioned, sorry, I tried it. Oh, and on our website, we have a curricular framework that is aligned to ISTE standards. Uh, that is free just for download. And we also have printed versions of it in the booth if you want to check that out. We have a, a lot of content online on, under our Learn site as well as introductory courses on VR. Right now, just pure video courses of these real rock star folks that we have in our uh, Brighton office that have been building this and sharing it online. Awesome, you know, wonderful community blogs and forums. We are also starting up our own education advisory boards, as well as ambassadors and engaged educators who would like to work closer with us. And, and do more around the feedback into the product and the curriculum areas that we work on. I had the Adobe Leader program back at Adobe, and that was just so valuable to have people participate with us and um, for us to be able to support you as well. So I would love to uh, hear from you guys if you are interested in that. And I don't know if I'm out of time, but do come to the booth and hear about, I mentioned Collab. One of the other areas, just to give you a heads up on, I think is really important right now is analytics. So the analytics that's built in free in a tool is it gives the ability to, for, to see user pathways, to understand how people are using your game, how they're uh, engaging, where they're dropping off. 
it's, it's really important to start that process early as students are starting to build games. So it becomes a constant iterative process to test and evaluate the program and is uh, absolutely going to be a huge area in gaming as well as looking at any other experience that you're building to constantly think about data and how people are using and engaging with it. Other than throwing it out there and just you know hoping, but sort of build that into like the thinking process, and you're seeing that a lot in the um, in a lot of the big higher ed programs right now. So that is the the other reason why we're trying to get resources built as quickly as possible to give you guys access to you know, how to do that within the in the curricular program. Uh, but the but you can right now even in Unity turn those analytics on and be able to see the content and be able to see, as you get people going through the content, um, what, what is actually happening with it. It's, it's really, really cool and exciting, I think, about where that's going. So I will get off the stage so you can come up here, but does anybody have any other questions? Here's my email. Mention the partner program. And that's my email, and again, come by our booth, because we're really excited to show everybody some uh, awesome VR content. Thanks, you guys. Thank you. Oh, sh uh, sure. I, I just, uh, it's Megan, M E G A N S. And I have cards with booth, too. Because they're all in shipping right now, I've got like five shipping. Everyone, my name is David Amadi. Uh, Scott asked me if I can give you a quick demo of acting major, and I said, why not? So hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> did you know you were presenting, or did it happen today? <laughs> no, a few days ago. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> students help each other. 
So this is what we think is the solution by training students to become leaders and help other students. We train students to learn how to communicate, how to collaborate, uh, how to help each other in problem solving, and how to lead a group of other students. Um, our mission is enable, to enable these students, uh, the younger students, to become leaders and basically uh, teach computer science to each other. Our product has three main components. We have a software, um, a curriculum, and a community, but the way you see the images you know, shows it. We have a peer leader on the top left, and then we have three learners. These students could be anywhere in the world, and they can work together on a project, and the leader can help them through the software. So if you think about it, um, um, take a game design tool, like, for instance, Scratch, and add virtual collaboration and communication tools to it, and that will be something like Python. So we have our own programming language and our own game design environment, which is uh, somewhat different from block-based languages. So our software is completely web-based, it's visual. We have students of five grade and above using it. It has a real-time collaborative component, as I said. So um, how many of you have used Google Docs and are familiar with this collaboration aspect? So basically take that and put it again in a game design tool for um, students. It has a built-in physics engine that makes it easy for students to practice different um, aspects of physics easily uh, and visually, and it has web and mobile publishing. Uh, we are working our, on our curriculum right now. We have a book and video tutorials, but there is a lot more coming out in the next few months. And our hope is to create this global community. That's where we are heading, so that the students can uh, pair with each other. We help leaders and learners to connect to each other and teach coding to each other. Um, so, and then uh, they can provide on-demand help. A student can run into a problem. There is immediately somebody in the community, community that can jump in into their project and they have them do their coding. Um, these are some of the games that have been built with Activator, um, anything from simple games to like breakout to uh, platformer games. Um, so Activator is different from what is out there right now by First of all, having this social component that makes students more engaged. Uh, they keep to uh, work together and communicate while they are coding. They, they get to do pair programming uh, remotely or in the same class. Um, there is going to be on-demand help, so whenever they run into a problem, there is going to be another student helping them. And so we want them to make and publish their games. So our courses are built around um, popular games like Flappy Bird and Angry Bird. Um, some of them you know, are popular in other places, but in Activator you can make a Flappy Bird in 15 minutes. And in one afternoon, um, two students can, if they know Activator, they can create a simple version of uh, and reverse because of the easy uh, to use physics components that are built into Activator. Um, please visit us at Woods 1311 uh, to tell you more about Activator and I would like to give you a quick demo of the game design environment. as two different users. So think about these three users to be completely in two different locations around the world or at least in the United States. Um, so what I'm doing is Safari 
this is Chrome to different browsers to different users um, following each other. So basically what we do here, um, so this user, which is called John Smith in the other user's browser, uh, they see each other. And uh, so this user is following the other user, right? So John is following Navid. Now, basically Navid wants to show John how to do programming on a certain part to make the bird fly um, or edit the scene. So for instance, if you see the scenes here and the properties that are set up, um, so Navid can set the, so if they we run the scene, so far, this is what we see. Now we can set the gravity easily here to um, 10 and see the gravity changes here right away. And we run the scene, now the bird falls, right? Now, um, John is following Navid, so Navid wants to show John how to do the programming. We go to the programming language. This is a program of the bird. I'll click the program here. We want to program um, the bird so that every time you click on the scene, the bird flies. It's event-based programming. Um, follows the general model of JavaScript. And so we use here the scene mouse down. And um, basically, these two are doing pair programming together. Um, John can add the program here. Uh, let's say John adds the speed to 10. And Navi says, press enter. Navi says, single to unity. Right? So this is distributed pair programming. This would be five, ten users joining the session and working together. Now, Navid goes back to the main scene, and because John is following Navid, it gets there, they can try the scene together, and they, are, they can be on the chat or on, uh, on audio chat to talk to each other. Now, basically, we run the scene, and we see that every time we click on the scene, the bird jumps up. So that's and so we could do the programming together or edit the scene together. That's it.